Toshiba ran this full-page magazine advertisement in 1994, showing a transistor radio and touting it as the world's smallest in 1959. The radio is neither small nor from 1959. It's from 1957, but the Toshiba I've got to show you today is small and quite possibly from 1959. Nineteen fifty nine or nineteen sixty, I'd say, and oh what a treat this is. Any of these little Toshibas are treasures, but this one comes with something very special. Are you ready? I don't know where to look. At the cute little jewel of a radio, or back to the left at that strange white thing sitting in the box. I'm afraid that curiosity gets the best of me, and I've got to know more about that white thing first. It appears to be, and is, some sort of cradle for the radio. It has what appears to be a light on it, and a little push button on the side. These two pins inside the well where the radio would go help to clear up a long-standing mystery with these little Toshiba models. Several small Toshiba transistor radio models have these little pin connectors on the bottom of them. I'd always assumed there was some kind of connector cord or some sort of dock available for these radios. Well, here it is. Yes, the radio sits right down in there in a nice playing position. So what exactly does this little dock do? Well, it's not some Bluetooth gizmo, that I can tell you. I've shown a few radios on this channel that mate to speaker boxes and power supplies, and I encourage you to watch them if you like this sort of thing. These radios are called convertibles because they convert a radio from home use to portable use. Some of those docks have speakers in them, some have amplifiers and speakers, and some plug into AC power to save batteries. This one doesn't plug into AC power, but it does hold its own batteries in order to save the radio's batteries when the radio is in the dock. It holds three C cells to power the radio and one AA pen light battery to power the light. The light switch is that push button temporary switch, so the light remains on only as long as you hold it. So I'm guessing this is for tuning in the dark. What will they think of next? Let's look this cute radio over. Of the four small, similar Toshiba models I've seen, this 60P395 model is the least common. All of these take three N cells for a 4.5 volt power supply. The little N cells are rather uncommon in transistor radios. Quiz time. What very early Sony model used N cells? You think about that, and I'll show you in a minute. Even in the tiny confines of this very small radio, we see that Toshiba still added premium touches, such as wrapping component leads in extra vinyl insulation. If you appreciate well-made things, it's a delight to look inside this radio. We see how the three batteries walk around the speaker, fitting in there however they can, yet all orderly and very well constructed. Let's look it over some more. The lettering and numbers are very Toshiba, if you know what I mean. Very cute. Now, what about that early Sony model that used N-cells? It is the only Sony model I know of that used those batteries. Here it is, their earphone-only TR33 from 1955. And though they only made one radio that used them, Sony included the N-cell among the limited sizes of batteries they made. So here are a pair of seldom-seen early Sony N-cell batteries. Here's the leather case for this Toshiba radio. Everything all tucked in nice. The Toshiba 60P395, six-transistor pocket radio, made in Japan.